Now, I rise today, Mr Deputy President, to speak on an issue that I believe will contribute immensely to the great state of Western Australia. The issue I speak of is mixed martial arts, and more specifically about hosting an ultimate fighting championship event in Perth. I have personally spoken with UFC executives and representatives. Mr Tom Wright, UFC Director for Canada, Australia and New Zealand, Mr Joe Carr, UFC Vice President of International, and Mr Peter Klosko, who is UFC's Australian and New Zealand representative, all of whom have indicated they would most definitely be interested in hosting an event in Perth if they were allowed. However, the West Australian Barnett government has stood in the way of this by introducing a ban back in March 2013 prohibiting the use of a fenced enclosure in mixed martial arts events. This ridiculous uh, decision was even contrary to advice given by the WA Combat Sports Commission, a governing body that supports the use of a fenced enclosure and voiced concerns about the decision made by the government. The Commission stated, and I quote, it supports the use of fenced enclosures for MMA contests but will abide by this decision." Unquote. This particular comment comes from the body that actually recommends and enforces the rules. So it appears that we have a case of professionals being dictated to by the politicians, who clearly do not have the best interests of the athletes and the sporting community foremost in their minds. This has made mixed martial arts in WA far less safe. It was also stated widely in the media that there was no consultation within the combat sports community who would have told the government how this move would put athletes' safety at risk. So what does this all mean? Well, it is preventing the most professional mixed martial arts organisation in the world from hosting an event in Perth. The UFC will not risk the safety of their athletes if they cannot compete in the octagon, which is fenced. This was personally conveyed to me by the UFC, who wanted to stress how important the safety measure is to the organisation. This is why I cannot understand the WA government's decision, because it does not account for athlete safety and, secondly, prevents the premier organisation bringing a professional bout to Perth. That is why today this speech will mark the beginning of my UFC for Perth petition in the hope of getting the UFC to the West. This ridiculous Barnett government decision needs to be overturned. Now let's talk about some of the issues which I've briefly raised so far. Because of the action of the West Australian government, some people automatically presume that mixed martial arts is banned in Western Australia. But, Mr Deputy President, Acting Deputy President, this is not the case. Mixed martial art events are sanctioned on the proviso that the event must be conducted in a boxing ring. This was the same as Victoria, who this year changed their regulations to allow MMA events to be competed in a fence enclosure. The Victorian Sports Minister, Mr John Aaron, pointed out that competing in a fenced enclosure is, and I quote, a move industry experts say will increase safety and reduce the likelihood of serious injury. Let me explain to you why a safety enclosure is important. In the sport, the full spectrum of martial arts is utilised. Many of those are Olympic sports, such as boxing, wrestling, taekwondo and judo, but it also encompasses other martial arts, such as karate, Muay Thai and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. If a fenced enclosure is not there when an athlete goes for a takedown, the athletes can go through the ropes, potentially injuring themselves, officials and or spectators. And yes, it is true that some MMA bouts in a boxing ring still occur, but these are with far smaller promotions. The larger, and I stress, the professional organisations conduct bouts in a fenced enclosure because they want to ensure the athlete's safety. Having an organisation set a better standard in terms of safety and professionalism is not dissimilar to various industries in Australia and industries that I know a little bit about, such as the transport industry. For example, if you have a reputable company that is the highest paid organisation and upholds the value of their employees by providing a safe working environment, then it actually improves the whole industry because employees want those standards in their organisations. There is no wonder MMA athletes want to compete for the UFC, and the benefit of this is it will lift the standards throughout the industry. The UFC is a leader of the sport of MMA. The leadership within the UFC has been especially evident when MMA was in its infancy, it had limited rules and was looked at as an underground sport. 
The evolution of the sport led by the UFC has made MMA into a professional sport, now considered the fastest growing sport in the world. There are now unified rules of MMA that are globally agreed on. If there wasn't leadership taken by the UFC, the sport would not be a professional one. That is why it is hard to understand why the WA Barnett government is allowing the sport to go backwards in WA. To make a bad decision even worse, the state is foregoing the economic benefit of hosting the UFC in Perth. Sydney have hosted the UFC event no less than four times. Brisbane, Gold Coast and Adelaide have hosted an event once, all with great success. In November this year, the UFC will host its first event in Melbourne at Etihad Stadium, expecting some 70,000 spectators. This will be one of the biggest UFC events in history and will be headlined by the UFC's biggest draw card and ESPN Sportswoman of the Year mm. and UFC bantamweight title holder Ronda Rousey. The co-event is another female title fight. Like Western Australia, Victoria had a ban of fenced enclosures but has since overturned that ban, as I said previously. And the current sportsman of Victoria stated when changing the rules that, and I quote, the new regulations will make the sport safer by introducing a safety enclosure such as the octagon, given the green light to UFC bouts in Victoria that will boost tourism and create jobs. Those are the things I do like to hear, boost tourism and create jobs. So why are these states smart enough to have a UFC event and Western Australia is still languishing behind? Are we a state in WA that no longer cares about tourism and job creation like the rest of the other states? And just to quote another figure that came out recently, the international tourism to Western Australia grew by just 1.22 per cent in the year ending June 2015, compared to the national average of 11.8 per cent. In Adelaide, the UFC itself pretty much booked out a hotel, but they also had many interstate and international visitors watching the fight live. I was advised that there were many West Australians that made the journey east to Adelaide, and I know that many more will go to Melbourne. Not only would they get to see a world-class event in Perth, but to be frank, they would be getting a glimpse of the best state in the land. Uh, I now want to address the issue that the WA government will want to push, and that is that the sport promotes violence. Well, I stated previously, mixed martial arts is not banned in WA, just like boxing is not banned. The access for people to view MMA is not banned in WA. So why are they essentially banning the UFC? If it was about violence, then why not ban boxing, MMA, karate, judo, whatever? Why in essence ban the organisation that sets the highest standard in the sport but allows smaller, semi-professional or amateur organisations to conduct events? They have never, ever addressed this. The elite promotion that is the UFC has their own code of conduct which has seen athletes terminated and or suspended. The UFC is known for their commitment to be a mainstream professional sport. So when an incident occurs, they take it very, very seriously. There are no exemptions and champions have been stripped of their titles. Majority of the athletes on the UFC roster are full-time professional MMA athletes and are the highest paid in the sport. The UFC has also one of the strictest drug policies in sport. As discussed, the UFC were part of the negotiations that brought in a set of unified rules to mixed martial arts. This made the sport a more regulated one, with many rules compared to the image of it being a no-rules fight. Much of those rules recommended by the UFC are the same rules for modern mixed martial arts. This is the level of professionalism that has evolved mixed martial arts. And I was fortunate enough, Mr Acting Deputy President, to see how the operations worked in Adelaide. And from my perspective, I saw how professional the UFC are. Safety of the athletes was of utmost importance and they made no secret of it because of the most professional organisation they want to set the standard. It just seems archaic that the WA government, in effect, has excluded the UFC from going to Perth. In closing, I wish to reiterate that the West Australian Government's position is just plainly wrong and is ensuring that safety is no longer a priority in WA and mixed martial arts. This poor decision is essentially banning the UFC from hosting an event in Perth and foregoing the level of professionalism and economic benefit that they will bring to WA. This dr draconian nanny state approach by the Government is solely punishing the followers of UFC.